welcome to the third and final part of building a diorama based around the famous Barmali fountain in Stalingrad and creating a little scene uh, around it. Um, I've got quite a busy video in store for you. I've got a couple of show and tells, uh, gifts I received from a recent birthday, um, which aren't exactly modeling related, but they're related to this. Um, so hopefully some of you find them interesting. Um, I've also got a, a short video of a, uh, a local bunker, German bunker that I just took a recent trip up to, um, built during the German occupation of Jersey um, during the Second World War. Um, now that a lot of the uh, restrictions have been lifted, uh, certainly in Jersey from the obviously the coronavirus, a lot of places are beginning to open up. Um, so I took a trip up there recently and um, you can see how I got on. Um, for the model itself, um, I'll be finishing um, weathering the base now that the fountain is completed. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, this is where I've started uh, weathering with the AK pencils as opposed to the left, uh, which has still got to be started on. You can see the difference between the two. Um, the AK pencils, um, as always, brilliant, great product, really nice to work with. Um, picking out all the little details as I've also started with the bricks um, and all the other little bits and pieces from the shell holes. Then I can start gradually adding the figures, adding the car that's been built. It's going to go here. Um, and then finally some snow effects and some, uh, and some wet effects to uh, give it a cold, damp, uh, wintry feel to the scene. Once all that's done, I can add the fountain back, take the tape off and give it a varnish, the woods, give it a nice finish. And I've also, even the uh, Barmali um, nameplate has come down this week. That's just going to sit on the front to finish everything off. So a lot of lot to do lot to uh to catch up on and uh and hopefully you'll enjoy So as I promised you at the beginning of this video, there was a couple of things I wanted to quickly show you. Um, something that might interest some of you, um, not necessarily to do with modeling, but to do with the time period uh, that the, the, the Stalingrad diorama is based on. Um, the first thing is this, uh, is this book, um, the series of books uh, published by Osprey and it's their combat series, um, obviously Stalingrad 42 to 43, but they do do a number of different uh, books in the series ranging from uh, the Second World War back to the first, 
to Vietnam, uh, American Civil War, etc. So there's a number of uh, subjects that are covered. Um, but as always by Osprey, these books are, are really nicely detailed. Um, a lot of information uh, of the battle itself, um, obviously the opposing sides. And it goes into the, the different uniforms and the kits uh, of what the soldiers are wearing and what they're carrying. Everything is listed and detailed really, really nicely. Uh, likewise, likewise with the, the Soviet infantry. Uh, again, just comparing the two of them. Um, loads of information from start to finish of the battle. Lots of nice black and white photographs. But as always with Osprey, they do do a lot of, uh, of nice drawings and um, artist impressions in colour, for example. Like this one, um, really nice. So I'm about halfway through this book at the moment. Um, as I mentioned, they do do a number of different uh, subjects. I know there's one on Berlin, the Battle of Berlin, um, and the Western Theatre, I think, from '44, um, involving American troops, I think it is. So well worth a read, really recommended, and as I say, um, definitely worth a look. So that's one of them, recommended wholeheartedly. Uh, the second thing I wanted to quickly show uh, was to do with what this guy's carrying. Um, so he's uh, obviously from the Stalingrad diorama um, and he's got his MP40. And now I've got mine. Um, okay, so it's not an original, it's only a replica, um, but it's still pretty cool. Um, this is made by a, a Spanish company uh, called Denix. Um, as I say, it's only a replica. Um, the magazine comes out and it's only hollow obviously there's nothing in there but that just clips back up like that uh, this pops pops out as so just release it and goes back all the way like, like so so that's pretty nice if I try and hold it like that pulls right back and goes on the safety and then and then releases and then ready ready to fire so it's a really nice, it was a really nice surprise uh, present. Um, really happy with it. Um, it sits pride of place on my wall uh, in the uh, the modeling room. Um, I've put a few links onto some websites uh, that give you a bit more information on it. It was around about 200 pounds. Um, in the UK, um, there's certain laws. Um, you you need, think you need a license if, you need, if you're a member of a, a reenactment group or something to do with TV and film. Um, but here in Jersey, although it is the UK, we do have our own laws and, uh, and government and, uh, and you can actually just go in and buy a replica gun. Um, so I just thought I'd show you guys. Um, like I say, really pleased with it. Uh, that just clips back up like that, like so. The only thing apparently I've read um, that the strap isn't, isn't uh, too, too authentic. Um, but it's a really, really weighty thing. It's pretty heavy. Um, so that's that. And then looking in their book, uh, this is the little catalogue that came with it. And this company, Denix, do a range of different, uh, different weaponry. Uh, obviously all, we all, all, uh, all replicas. And uh, this caught my eye, the PPSH, um, the Russian um, submachine gun. So maybe one day uh, that might be on the list.